Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Nest Pi 4 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. This not only makes a Raspberry Pi 4 look like a very famous retro gaming console, but it also includes a USB to SATA adapter so that a 2.5 inch SSD can be fitted in a cartridge slot. So, Let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Nest Pi 4 case from Retro Flag, which I purchased from Pi Maroni for £28.50. And at the time of making this video, it's selling on Amazon.com for $40.89. Note that when this was first sold, it came with a USB-C power supply, and indeed this is still listed under tech specs on the product's web page. But this box doesn't list a power supply on the back, I don't think there's one inside, and that's clearly not a problem. I'm going to be using this with the official Raspberry Pi 4 power adapter, and I would imagine that most people who own a Raspberry Pi 4 also have a power supply, because if you don't, the Raspberry Pi 4 is a lot less fun. It does work so much better when you plug in a power supply. Anyway, enough of such things, let's open up this box. I think we just uh, flick it over and uh, oh, there we are, and aha, uh -huh. oh yes, look, it's in a sort of bag to keep it protected. Anything else? I always check inside boxes. Oh, we've got a leaflet. Maybe we'll look at that. Maybe we won't. We should do, of course. And uh, in here we have, there we are, the uh, Nest Pi 4 case, which it's good and chunky. It feels a good solid case. And as you can see on the front, we've got some switches, power and reset switches. These can be linked to a soft reset and power using scripts that run on the Pi, although I don't personally think I'm going to be doing that. Uh, we've got on the front here also USB 2 and USB 3 ports. And we've also got the little cover here that covers, I imagine, the cartridge slot. I've seen the pictures. Yes, in reality, it's just the same. There's the cartridge slot. We can put a two and a half inch SSD inside here and slot it in. That's, that's a really nice system. I really like that. Around the back, I imagine we've got these things we would expect. Yes, we've got holes for the Pi's HDMI connectors and its audio connector. Over here, power will go in and we'll have Ethernet over there. On the, that side, it's uh, gloriously blank. And on this side, we've got the slot for the Pi's microSD card. And then on the base, anything on the base? Oh yes, I remember on the uh, Nest Pi cases, I've looked at the previous ones, we have this little compartment which comes off, I think like that, like this, there we are, and you can store all kinds of things in here, things like half a matchstick, or maybe, I don't know, some dead insects you want to preserve, or even maybe a micro SD card to use in your Raspberry Pi. Good to have a little storage compartment on the base of the case. And so, there we are. This is the Nest Pi 4 case for the Raspberry Pi 4, and I think it's now high time to go and grab an unsuspecting Raspberry Pi 4 and to fit it inside. Right, I've now grabbed a Raspberry Pi 4 and also one of these fantastic value Kingston SSDs, which we'll put in the cartridge slot in the case. So let's bring the case back in. Here we are and it's supplied without the screws in, so I think, I haven't tried this yet, but I think we can just lift the top off. Yes, we can like that, and uh, oh, it's even more exciting inside. And uh, just before we look at that, you can see this is the inside of the top piece. This contains the, the cartridge uh, mechanism and also the SATA connector wheel at the back of here, which links to this uh, USB 3 port by the SATA to USB adapter. So this will plug into the pipe when we put the top back on the case. But uh, let's go back to the base of the case. There we are, and we can see we've got some screws here and some pads for the heat sink and the screwdrivers even provided. And talking of the heat sink, here is the heat sink. This is rather neat. This is, uh, get this thing out of the little bag. And uh, there we are, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good heat sink for a pie, isn't it? And it's got a fan built into it, so that's clearly, we'll be fitting that. And the pie, We'll be going in here, there's a bit of paper saying uh, 
make sure we remove the SD card from the Pi or we'll snap it off by trying to get it through the hole when the SD card's still in. So the Pi clearly is going to be going something like that, I imagine, like, like this when we've got all these connectors come out of the way. Yes, the Pi will be fitting in there, but before we do that, I think we need to take the Pi and we need to fit some thermal pads before we, we put the heatsink on. So let's take the Pi and do that. And there we are, our thermal pads are now in place. And if, like me, you're wondering about the levels here, because the SOC of a system on a chip is higher than the RAM, that is accommodated for in the heatsink. Indeed, if we go back to the heatsink to take a look at that, you can see hopefully here that uh, this is the part of the heatsink which will contact the thermal pad on the RAM, and this bit will contact the thermal pad on the SOC. So the levels are accommodated for. And I do really like this cooler for the Raspberry Pi 4. It'll be very interesting to see how well it works when we test it out in practice. Anyway, let's go back to putting the Raspberry Pi in the case, where I think we start fitting the USB connectors, the things that'll go to the front port. We'll put the USB 3 one in at the base like that, because the SATA one will go in the top. And then this USB 2 connector has to go in at the top, I think. And then we have to put the Ethernet connector. Oh, this is tricky, isn't it? That goes in a bit later. There we are. The Ethernet connector will go in, hopefully, like this. Get in, you little swine. There we are. That's in there. It's just the, the strength. There we are. You probably heard it click there. And this hopefully now will drop in. These are some very solid cables. This will go in, but it's going to take a little bit of... There we are. It's coaxed into place. And what you can hopefully see here is we've got this USB 2 connector on the top, this USB 3 on the bottom. We've got the spare USB 3 port for the SATA to USB adapter, but we've lost access to one of the USB 2 ports because of the position of the circuit board here. You can't even leave a, a dongle internally in the case. So we do lose one of the USB ports on the Pi using the SPI 4 case, which is a bit of a shame. I can accept losing the port for the SATA to USB adapter. That's perfectly fair, but that one, well, there we are. That's, that's life. Not everything can be perfect. Anyway, I think we can now take the heat sink, the heat sink, the cooler I really like. I've got it the right way around, I think, in terms of which bits go where. I think I have. So this will drop in here like this, I think. That's going in there. I can feel it making contact with the thermal pads. And we have to plug in the fan on one of these little itty bitty connectors. Oh, that's a small connector. Does it want to go in? Go on. It's going to go in. There we are. The fan is connected. And I think we can now grab two of the correct screws and drop them into the heatsink down here. Two go in on this side of the heatsink, and then the other side is held by the case screws. I'm actually using the official screwdriver here. I don't know what this screwdriver is called. Maybe it's called Michael. It, to me, it looks a bit like a screwdriver that might be called Michael. Anyway, I'll finish off these screws. There we are. And then finally here, we need to fit this connector. This goes onto the Pi's GPIO connector. It goes in that way, it seems, that red to the front. And this will actually provide power to the Pi, which will come in through the power input on the side of a case, which is not the Pi's own power connector. And also, if we're going to be using the soft reset and power switches, this gives us links to GPIO pins to control that. So that's in there. And talking of the front buttons and the potential to use a safe shutdown script with them, over here there is a switch. Let's just move the wire out of the way so we can see the switch properly. And the default position for this switch is off, so you don't use safe shutdown script. That's why I'm going to leave that switch, because maybe it's just me. I can't see the point of using the safe shutdown scripts running in software. When I want to turn off a Raspberry Pi, I close down the operating system and turn off the power adapter. I don't want to have a script running that means I can press a switch on the front of a case to tell the Pi to shut down rather than me shutting it down properly. So I'm not going to use the safe shutdown script. So let's put that back where it was and check everything is properly in place, which I think it is. And it's therefore now time to put on the top of the case. Very exciting. This has got its USB 3 connector for the cartridge, the SATA interface, so that plugs in here like that. Everything is in place okay. Pull that wire around and hopefully this will drop on the top. It will. So I now just need to grab one of the longer screws and we'll flick the case 
over and put those screws in with the help of our new friend Michael the screwdriver. Let's sort that out. And here we are, the last screw. It escaped onto the floor, but I went and found it. It wasn't going to escape and get away with it, was it? Not with me and Michael the screwdriver sorting it out. There we are. So that's got that all together. We've now got a good solid final case, but of course we've not dealt with the cartridge slot. So let's open that up like that and take out the cartridge itself. And we'll go across to our SSD. This is a 128 gigabyte Kingston SSD waiting very patiently. And we're gonna fit it in the cartridge. And I think this just clips open like that. And then as we can see, the SSD will drop in like that. That seems to be pretty straightforward. And then this has to somehow clip back on top, which is a little bit, I think like, oh yes, that's gone on. And no, it hasn't clipped, that's clipped, that's gone in. Actually very, very well. There are some screws we can put in, but we don't need to put the screws in because clearly that's gonna hold very well. And as you can see on the end, the SATA connector for the SSD goes straight through to the connector inside the case. This is a very good design. In fact, it's a very, very similar design to the cartridges that are used in my Atomos recorders on which this very video is being recorded right now. Anyway, I will put in the screws just for completeness. There we are, our SSD is now secured against all things, including probably a nuclear attack. So let's go back to the case, whereby, Jingo, we can just slot in the cartridge. That's a very good slotting in effect. Put down the cover, and we're now all ready to give the Nest Pi 4 a test. Greetings. Here I am back again. I've now got everything wired up as you can see, so let's turn on the power like uh, that. There we are, a little LED has come on. And I should tell you that I've got Raspberry Pi OS installed here on the Kingston SSD we just put in the cartridge slot. And there's no micro SD card in the Pi. And so clearly, as the Pi is booting up, I think it is various messages here coming up from the monitor itself, but the Pi seems to be booting up. Is it booting up? Are you booting up Pi? I think you are. Things are happening probably. Yes, the Pi is booted up. And as it's booted up, it means that the SATA to USB adapter in the Nest Pi 4 is bootable when used with a Pi 4 with appropriate firmware. Or of course, you could run your operating system from a micro SD card and use an SSD in the cartridge slot as extra storage. Or indeed, you could not use the cartridge slot at all. Oh, and if you're wondering about the case fan, which is not temperature controlled, it is pretty quiet. You can certainly hear the case fan, but it isn't one of those really high pitched noises you sometimes get with Raspberry Pi cases because the fan is so small. This is a fairly low pitched noise. It's in the background. It's not the sort of thing that's going to distract. Now, talking of the case fan, over the years I've tested out many different Raspberry Pi cooling solutions with this table being one that was included in my most recent video where I ran temperature tests. This was a video where I tested out the Argon 1 M.2 case, but also here you can see cooling results from different cooling solutions for a Raspberry Pi 4. So let's see how the Nest Pi 4 compares. So if we go across to the Raspberry Pi desktop, here we are, where by the magic of filmmaking, I've run up the Genie editor and loaded in my test script just to remind you what it does. And it basically runs a nice little loop, as it says up there, where it first of all takes a temperature measurement and it then uses suspense to stress out the Pi's CPU for a couple of minutes roughly by factoring prime numbers up to a value of 25,000 and with the output from suspense being suppressed by the bit on the end of the command there. And then at the end of that loop, it takes a final temperature measurement. So we get eight temperature measurements with the Pi doing a lot of work between them so we can see how well our cooling solutions are performing. So let's get rid of that. And I brought up a terminal like that. So we'll start off the temperature test. And there we are, the test has finished. We've got our results. So let's transfer those across to our table where as you can see, they're pretty respectable. Certainly the Nest Pi case is no match for an ice tower or my own Noctua fan and heatsink rig when it comes to extreme Raspberry Pi 4 cooling. But 
Performance is very much in line with popular Pi 4 case and cooling solutions like the Pimeroli fan shim, the Flirt case and the Argon 1 M.2 case. And indeed, the Nes Pi 4 is a very solid alternative to a case like the Argon 1 M.2, as whilst both include a USB to SATA interface for an SSD, the Nes Pi 4 has active cooling and currently sells for a lower price. The Nest Pi 4 is a very solid, a very well built Raspberry Pi 4 case for retro gamers, with its only downside being the fact you've only got two available USB ports. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.